Let's talk about how the DNA structure is able to stay like what it is. So how it is stable, let's just say. Before that, let's just recap the basic structure of a nucleotide, which are the building blocks of RNA and DNA. It consists of a carbon, five carbon ring sugar, and also a phosphate group. And on, and on the other side is a base. Now it is important to remember that there are four types of bases in DNA, and can be divided into two groups. Group number one are the pyrimidines, which are the single ring bases. And there's also the purines, which are the double ring bases. Pyrimidines consist of C for cytosine and T for thymine, and the purines consist of A for adenine and G for guanine. Adenine binds with thymine and cytosine binds with guanine in a double-stranded DNA structure. So knowing this bit of information, we can now explore and understand what helps maintain the structure of DNA. There are positive forces which help stabilize the DNA structure, and there are the negative forces which try to destabilize the structure of DNA. And both of these essentially determine if the RNA or DNA is double-stranded or single-stranded. If you think about it, if the structure isn't stable, it will be a single strand. It will be single stranded because it can't hold a stable double stranded structure. And if there is enough positive forces, then a double stranded structure, DNA structure, can occur. So let's look at the positive forces first. Now there are three main types. Positive force number one is hydrogen bonds. So here we have a single ringed thymine and a double ringed adenine. And it has hydrogen bonds here and here. Note the number of hydrogen bonds. And on the other pair of bases, uh, also attached to hydrogen bonds, is the guanine and cytosine. And the hydrogen bonds are here, here, and here. You might have noticed that thymine and adenine attach through with two hydrogen bonds, whereas guanine and cytosine attach with three hydrogen bonds. So obviously, cytosine and guanine are much stronger than adenine and thymine because it has more hydrogen bonds. CNG has more hydrogen bonds. An example can be shown uh, by their breaking points. So for example, C, cytosine and guanine's breaking point, where the hydrogen bonds break, can be broken at 4 degrees Celsius, whereas adenine and thymine's breaking point is at 2 degrees Celsius. The next positive force, positive force number two, is hydrophobic interactions, which is basically interactions with water. So here we have a normal DNA with its sugar backbone, and in the middle are the bases. In the middle of DNA, the bases are hydrophobic. They are scared of water, whereas the phosphates of the sugar backbone like to interact with water. They are hydrophilic. So you can imagine if these blue things here, they are water molecules, which are which all attach with hydrogen bonds. And here we have a single-stranded DNA, here, and a little bit further we have another single-stranded DNA. So the bases, here, here, and here, are hydrophobic. They are scared of water. And the sugar backbone is hydrophilic. They love water. So through hydrophobic interaction, the bases will want to attach with each other and, enclose them, and, and be enclosed by the sugar backbone. I hope you understand that. So now the structure will have the hydrophobic, the bases, not interacting with the water, and the hydrophilic, which is the sugar backbone, interacting with water on the outside. The last positive force is base stacking. So here we have the sugar backbone with the base. And the fifth carbon attaches to the phosphate group. And the hydroxyl on the other side attaches to another phosphate group of another nucleotide. Now to understand the base stacking, we have to learn that the bonds on a single nucleotide can rotate. There is rotational flexibility in some of the bonds of the DNA chain. So here we see rotations. And so due to these rotations and flexibility, the bases are like flat plates with the sugars at an angle. A DNA strand looks something like this, a little bit messy because of the rotations. So here we have the sugar backbone and here we have the bases. So as you can see, the DNA structure, it looks something like a staircase and all wobbled up. And that is why, through this configuration, the DNA molecule's electrons can interact with the atoms of other molecules around, further stabilizing the DNA structure. So what are the negative forces? Well, the negative forces in DNA behave essentially like magnets.
So if the negative sides are face to face, they would repel each other. It's the same principle as with as DNA. So here is one sugar backbone with the five prime and three prime in, and on the other side the five uh, prime n is on the other side as well as a third prime down the bottom. And here are the bases. Now we are just looking at the phosphates, which are here, here, and everywhere. They are negatively charged, the phosphates. And so negative on one side and negative on the other, just like the magnets, will want to repel each other. However, the three positive forces which we talked about overcome this one negative force. And so that is how DNA is able to stay stable. Thank you. I hope that made sense. Please comment and like. Thank you.